3 iAtlas is now making its closest pass by Earth, and we've been tracking it closely throughout its journey. For months, observers have followed its unusual jets that seemed locked in place. The presence of industrial nickel in its composition, and the mysterious maneuver that occurred while it was hidden behind the sun. Now, a fresh development has appeared. As the object draws nearer, telescopes are detecting a greenish glow surrounding it, along with new shapes emerging within its gas cloud. This raises an obvious question. Can an ordinary comet really turn green and develop new features this close to Earth? And what if the most important changes are unfolding right now in full view? If you've been watching the latest images of 3i Atlas, the most noticeable change is also the most puzzling. The comet isn't simply becoming brighter as it approaches Earth. It's also developing a distinct green glow that wasn't present before. And that combination has scientists paying very close attention. So what are these new observations actually showing? Put simply, the comet's coma, the hazy envelope of material surrounding its solid nucleus, is now brighter overall and significantly greener than it was earlier in its path. This isn't a subtle shift either. When recent images are compared with observations from just a few months ago, the difference is clear. This change isn't the result of screen settings or a single heavily processed image. Multiple telescopes, using different instruments and color filters, are recording the same pattern. That consistency tells researchers that something real is happening as the comet moves closer to Earth. But does a green comet automatically mean something strange or unnatural is taking place? Not necessarily. Green comets are well known in astronomy, and the color is usually linked to a molecule called diatomic carbon, written as C2. This molecule forms when carbon-based compounds break apart under sunlight and then glow as they interact with solar energy. As comets warm up, these molecules can escape into the coma, and when sunlight hits them, they emit a green light that telescopes can easily detect. In that sense, green is often a sign of an active comet rather than a mysterious one, and many familiar comets in our own solar system have shown similar colors as they approach the sun. What makes 3 I Atlas interesting again is not the green glow itself, but when it appeared and how it differs from earlier observations. Earlier images didn't show this strong green signal at all. In fact, some data suggested the comet appeared redder, which points to a different mix of materials in the coma at that time. This tells scientists that the comet's output isn't stable. As it heats up, it's releasing different substances, which strongly suggests that sunlight is now reaching layers beneath the surface that were previously untouched. You can think of it like a frozen object made of multiple layers. The outer layer reacts first, while deeper layers only begin to respond once enough heat slowly works its way inward. When those deeper layers finally warm up, they can release new gases that weren't escaping before, offering a simple explanation for why the comet's color is changing instead of remaining the same. Another detail that often gets lost in headlines is the difference between a comet becoming brighter and a comet becoming greener. These two changes don't always come from the same cause. Brightness is often driven by dust, meaning tiny solid particles that reflect sunlight very effectively. Color, especially a green hue, is usually linked to gas being released. When reports say the comet is both brighter and greener, it's easy to treat that as a single event. Scientifically, though, these can be separate processes happening at the same time. A comet can brighten because it's releasing more dust. While the green glow increases because a specific gas like C2 is becoming more abundant in the coma, separating these signals helps scientists understand what's happening at the source, rather than just reacting to what looks dramatic in images. This leads to another common question. Why can't scientists just look at a single image and immediately know what's going on? The reason is that still images, even very sharp ones, hide a lot of crucial information. A single frame captures only one moment, which means it can't show rotation, short-lived bursts of activity, or repeating patterns that become obvious only when images are taken over hours or days. If the comet is spinning, one side may release gas more strongly than the other, making the coma appear different depending on when the image was captured. A brief surge of activity could also temporarily brighten the coma before fading again. And if only that moment is recorded, it might seem like a permanent change when it isn't. Viewing angle also plays a major role. 
The way a jet or stream appears depends on how it's oriented relative to Earth. And the Sun. A narrow stream of gas might look faint or even invisible in one image and suddenly stand out in another simply because the perspective has shifted. That's why scientists rely so heavily on time-based observations, tracking how the comet behaves across many images rather than trusting a single snapshot. Without that context, you miss motion, repetition, and background behavior, which are often the most important clues to understanding comet activity. As 3 I Atlas continues moving closer to Earth, even small changes become more significant. Sunlight grows stronger, and any internal heat that has been slowly building has a better chance of triggering new activity. This can include the opening of fresh vents or changes in existing jets. These vents act as release points, allowing gas and dust to escape more forcefully. Even a modest shift in chemistry can serve as an early signal that something new may be developing. This doesn't mean a dramatic event is guaranteed, but it does explain why scientists are watching carefully for signs that the comet's behavior could change again. What makes this moment especially intriguing is the possibility that what we're seeing now isn't the peak of activity at all. It could be a quieter phase before the comet reveals something more significant. One of the most important things to understand about comets, and something that's often overlooked, is that heating doesn't happen instantly. Sunlight doesn't warm a comet all the way through the moment it gets closer to the sun, heat moves slowly through solid material, especially material that is cold, porous, and layered like a comet's nucleus. When a comet passes near the sun, the surface heats up first, but the interior can remain cold for weeks or even months. Because of this delay, comet activity can actually increase after the closest approach rather than during it which means the most telling changes may still be ahead. This is why scientists aren't caught off guard when a comet suddenly becomes more active at a later stage. Because in many cases, that's the moment when heat finally reaches deeper layers that hadn't responded before. As warmth slowly travels inward, the chemistry begins to shift in a meaningful way. Comets aren't made of a single, uniform material. Instead, they're built from layers that formed at different times and under different conditions. The outer layers may release simpler gases first, while deeper layers can hold materials that only escape once enough heat accumulates beneath the surface. When those inner layers finally warm up, they can release new molecules into space, directly affecting both the color and the brightness of the coma. This is one of the strongest reasons scientists believe the color changes in 3 I Atlas are significant, because they suggest we're not just seeing an increase in activity, but a change in the type of activity itself. The behavior appears to be driven by materials that were sealed inside the comet until recently. Put simply, the comet isn't just doing more of what was already doing. It's doing something different because new material is now being exposed. That leads to a question that sounds simple but matters a great deal. If the chemistry is changing, why doesn't the comet look the same from one night to the next? The answer lies largely in jets which play a major role in shaping a comet's appearance. Jets are not evenly distributed across the surface. Each one is a focused stream of gas and dust escaping from a specific location, almost like a natural exhaust vent. Depending on where a jet is positioned, it can make the coma appear uneven, brighter on one side, or even strangely shaped. A narrow, powerful jet can dominate the comet's overall look and even small changes in its strength or direction can completely alter what telescopes observe. This means that even if the total amount of material being released stays roughly the same, the comet can still appear dramatically different simply because of how and where that material is escaping. Viewing angle adds another layer of complexity, because a jet's appearance depends on how it's oriented relative to Earth and the Sun. A jet pointed slightly toward us can look bright and sharply defined while the same jet seen from the side may appear faint or spread out. That's why scientists are cautious about drawing big conclusions from a single image. Since geometry alone can explain many visual changes without requiring anything unusual to be happening physically, when rotation is added into the picture, the behavior becomes even more dynamic. A rotating comet doesn't release material evenly over time. Instead, it pulses as the nucleus spins a jet may face the sun for part of the rotation, heat up, release gas, and then shut down again as it rotates back into shadow. 
This can produce repeating patterns where the comet brightens, fades, and then brightens again, creating changes that can seem unpredictable unless the object is monitored closely over time. So can rotation really account for sudden shifts in brightness or color? Yes. And scientists have observed this effect many times before. Rotation can act like a natural clock that controls when different regions of the surface become active. One area may contain a certain type of ice that releases a specific gas when heated, producing one color, while another region releases a different substance later on. As these regions rotate in and out of sunlight, the comet's appearance can change in ways that seem abrupt but are actually well organized. This is why astronomers look for repeatable patterns, because when changes occur on a regular cycle, it's a strong sign that rotation is a key factor rather than a random outburst. At this stage, it helps to pause and place 3 I Atlas alongside the only other interstellar objects humanity has ever observed. The first, one Iomuamua didn't behave like a typical comet at all. It showed unusual motion without any visible coma, forcing scientists to reconsider how outgassing might work when it involves unfamiliar materials. The second, 2 I Borisov, appeared far more conventional, displaying clear gas and dust activity that fit comfortably within standard comet models. So where does 3 I Atlas fall? Right now, it seems to occupy a middle ground, it clearly shows comet-like behavior. Yet the timing, chemistry, and structure of that activity are raising questions that don't yet have straightforward answers. Interstellar visitors are rare, and each one has the potential either to reinforce existing theories or quietly undermine them, with heat continuing to penetrate deeper layers and new regions turning toward the sun. Three, I Atlas may still have more surprises ahead if it begins behaving in ways that don't match any previous example. The most important clues won't come from what we've already seen, but from what the comet reveals next. What makes the current moment with 3 I Atlas particularly unsettling is that this isn't a case of one telescope spotting a strange anomaly while others wait to confirm it. Multiple ground-based observatories and space-based instruments are detecting the same changes at the same time. When independent systems line up like this, it strongly suggests that something real is unfolding around the comet right now, and that the process isn't finished yet. Another key detail is that the story has moved beyond a simple green tint in the coma. Recent observations describe changes in the shape and structure of the tail itself, including signs that more than one tail component may be present simultaneously. This matters because different types of tails usually point to different materials. Dust and gas react differently to sunlight, and the solar wind. A dust tail tends to be wider and more curved, while a gas tail is often straighter and more sharply defined. Seeing both evolve together suggests that surface activity on the comet is becoming more complex. At the same time, observers have reported changes in the size and brightness of the coma, indicating that the rate at which material is being released isn't constant. Instead, it appears to be increasing or fluctuating as conditions change. If activity is rising, does that mean new kinds of material are being released? Possibly. And this is where recent chemistry reports come into play. Though this is also where careful wording is essential. Some reports mention detections of simple organic or precursor molecules, such as methanol or hydrogen cyanide. In the coma, while these names may sound dramatic, they are actually common in space and have been detected in many comets before. What makes their possible presence in 3 I Atlas interesting isn't that they exist, but what they reveal about the comet's composition and how its chemistry responds to heating. These molecules act as markers, helping scientists determine which layers are becoming active and whether deeper material is being exposed for the first time. Does this mean 3 I Atlas is special in a way that overturns everything we know about comets? Not necessarily. Finding simple organic molecules doesn't imply life intelligence, or anything artificial, scientifically. However, it matters because it allows researchers to compare this interstellar object with comets that formed around our own Sunday, by studying which molecules appear and when. Scientists can test whether the comet follows familiar chemical patterns or deviates from them. So far, the data suggests a mixture of both. Some behaviors match what we expect from a warming comet while other details are still under discussion. 
which is exactly what you'd expect from an object we've never encountered before. Another part of this story that often gets overlooked is how strongly the final images depend on data processing. Filters are used to isolate specific wavelengths of light. Image stacking combines many frames to reveal faint details. And tracking can be done either on the background stars or on the moving comet itself. Each of these choices changes what stands out and what fades into the background. If the stars are tracked, the comet may appear blurred, while tracking the comet causes the stars to streak. Neither approach is wrong, but each highlights different information. Exposure length also plays a role, because longer exposures can reveal faint gas clouds while washing out sharper structures near the nucleus. Can image processing make a comet appear more dramatic than it really is? Yes, but it can also hide important details. A green color may look stronger with one filter setup and weaker with another. And fine jets can disappear entirely if the exposure is optimized for the coma rather than the nucleus. That's why scientists avoid relying on a single image or color composite when drawing conclusions, and why context matters so much when interpreting headlines about color changes. The real science emerges when many images, taken using different methods, all tell the same underlying story. Looking ahead, researchers have a short but critical window to see what happens next, because comets can change rapidly under the right conditions. So what should people watch for in the coming days? One sign would be a sudden brightening that can't be explained by viewing angle alone, especially if it happens more than once. Another would be a clear change in the direction or sharpness of a jet, which could indicate that a new vent has opened or an existing one has become more active. An expanding coma would suggest a higher overall release of gas and dust, while repeating changes that follow a regular cycle would again point to rotation as the driving factor. There's also the possibility that nothing dramatic happens at all, and that outcome would still be scientifically valuable. If the comet gradually fades or settles down, it would suggest it has passed its most active phase and is beginning to cool, helping scientists better understand how interstellar comets behave near stars like our Sun. What matters most isn't spectacle, but whether the comet's behavior aligns with known physical processes once enough data is collected. Right now, the simplest explanation remains the most likely one, natural comet chemistry combined with delayed heating. As heat moves inward, different materials become active in stages, which can explain the color change, the brightening, and the evolving tail without invoking anything unusual. At the same time, scientists remain cautious because interstellar objects are rare, and even small surprises can reshape what we think we know. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the next video for more exciting content.